don't see how other Christians can discriminate against me. Then the master teach me again and teach me I'm not made by God and teach me who did make me. Unquote. And here spoke a woman who by her deeds had done what Deliver Tambo had called for to liberate us men from antique concepts and attitudes about the place and role of women in society and in the development and direction of our revolutionary struggle. And undoubtedly, Messali spoke this, felt this very deeply, that she should use her talents to help especially the millions of black women themselves, themselves practically to define their own place and role in society, fully, fully congress, cognizant that these two were made in God's image. With Messali knowing very well that God charged these who were made in his image to have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all of the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And the more she recalled all this heavy and unique responsibility given to humanity, the more she bemoaned the condition and especially of the black women of our country. Even today, these remain at the bottom of the heap, the poorest and most abused echelon in our society. Where there is no water delivery and no electricity, the task still falls on the black women to go to work like a beast of burden, to fetch the water and the firewood, and otherwise the children and the family will not eat. And still the cry rings out an end to gender violence. And yet the figures are read out every quarter and they tell a bleak story that yet more women have fallen victim to rape and other violent crimes against the person. I can only imagine the intense pain and shame Memo Tlana must have felt as she listened to the police, to the police service announced that between the April, June 2021 quarter and the April, June 22 quarter. Sexual offenses as a whole increased by 74, 74.1%. Rape by 72.4%. Sexual assault by 77.6%. This was an outstanding female leader of our people who sought to rebuild our nation by, among, th among other things, fighting dependency, especially among black women, for its corrosion of human agency, on one hand, and the lowering of dignity of the human being, by opposing supplication as a means of fighting poverty, as it not only lowered the dignity of the supplicant, but also exposed, exposed her to all manner of abuse and by encouraging the self-reliance as the most authentic expression of taking charge of one's immediate environment preparatory to the exercise of the right to self-determination. It is because of all of this that it would be a grave error to mention only in passing the Black Housewives League. The League was not a passing hobby or a diversion to Mess Ali. It could not be a mere diversion because it was to the black oppressed an important school, an incubator, in which was developed the dignified, self-reliant, and self-confident black woman, and especially the rural black woman, inspired to reach out towards a new society, which would open all the doors for her fully to realize herself and all her aspirations. Mersali, was driven to immerse herself in the work of the Black Housewives League because she was inspired by the blessed call, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Thus was Memutlana, a nation builder, who would have cried out as she listened to the crime statistics which inter, inter alia speak of the sustained abuse of women, she would have cried out, of what significance is it then 
that were made in God's image, entrusted with dominion over all the living things on earth. Prince Mangusu Tukhtelezi was a student at Fort Hay during the same period as Mangutlana, then Miss Maunye, and of her, Tukhtelezi has said she was passionate, a good activist, and a great patriot. She silenced quite a number of us male comrades. She was very blunt and very passionate, absolutely very passionate and very blunt. And she didn't hesitate to speak truth to power. She really stood out. And Gossip Tillis was speaking of a fellow member of the ANC Youth League who ended up being the secretary of the Victoria East branch of the ANC, which included Fort Hare. Explaining why she got there, Mesali said, as you grew up, you began to see the interconnections of things in a way that made more sense. Why were black people at the bottom of the rung with respect to everything? The answer to that was that it was the outcome of political decisions were taken by those with, with power. And when you probed further, you found that the way they got to be powerful was part of the wrong that needed to be corrected in this country." Unquote. And so it was that she joined those in our country who had decided to confront what she called the wrong that needed to be corrected in this country, obliged never to hesitate to be blunt and passionate and to speak truth to power, as Gossip Tillis said. It spoke to the high esteem in which she was held already then in 1953, when she got married to now late Dr. Ntato Mutlana, that Oliver Tambo and Father Trevor Adelson, Adelson spoke for the family of the bride. The honor and respect bestowed on her, even on that occasion of her wedding, proved justified during the following decades of Mayor Mutlana's activism. And because of what she did to advance the cause of freedom, she became, in many respects, the exemplar of the all-weather Qaeda for the liberation of our country. A devout Christian and an eminent faith leader, she reaffirmed the principled posture of the Christian Church, which was expressed in the 1985 Kairos document in these words, for very many Christians in South Africa, this is the Kairos the moment of grace and the opportunity, the favorable time in which God issues a challenge to decisive action. It is a dangerous time because if this opportunity is missed and allowed to pass by, the loss for the church, for the gospel, and for the people of South Africa will be immeasurable." Unquote. Mangutlana stood firm and said she was ready for decisive action. And so it was that she never betrayed the struggle even though she was subjected to frequent bounds, bouts of imprisonment. And so it was that she stood with the children as they defied apartheid terrorism from 1976 onwards. And so it was that she remained a constant pillar which drew many to her to receive inspiration to rally behind the cause of liberation confident of victory, I'm certain that even from a distance, who could always hear her sing even to herself what we just sang this morning, Liza is sitting a lap of Titlongo Senyanis. So in Tlang, as long as this is my Zuse, who sing this. Bona is well away to call Elizono Zalo, Unga Tobin Mumboyako. Mesa has left us, but such is the state of the nation that we too who live must repeat after her and dear Soga, Bona Israel Awuetu, Utole Lizono Zalo, Unga Tobin Mumboyako, Luze Lufu Sapolo. We say a fond farewell to an outstanding South African heroine forever thankful for everything she did for our nation and country. 
confident that when it, when it, it is time for the roll call to honor the heroes and heroines, her name will be among the first to be called. Truly to respect her, this I must say. I was very sad, but moved by her usual honesty and well-known bluntness when she said not long before she passed away, the ANC I knew has died. We must start anew and build it. And the ANC I knew was the ANC of Lutuli, of Mandela, of Robert Hersher. The official oration of the President on the solemn occasion of admission into the national orders, such as the order of the Baba, ends with his words. To them all, the living and the dead, on this day the nation says, by it. On this day, let all citizens and patriots proclaim glory to the honored members of the national orders. May the esteemed member of the order of the Baobab, our eminent leader and comrade, Mesa Limutlana, rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much. As we transition to the liturgy, we're going to ask uh, Sipo to play his piece. Also, the obituary, sorry. Shall we stand for the obituary? <coughs> Good morning, everyone. I'll be reading the obituary of Mayor Seli Mpifi Motlana. Seli Mpifi Motlana was born on the 9th of April 1927 in Moremela, a village near Pilgrim's Rest in Mpumalanga, the then Eastern Transvaal. To Toby and Louisa Lekharam Maunye Ne Mohane. In 1931, Mme Motlana moved to Johannesburg with her mother, where they lived in Fredadop and later moved to Sophia Town in 1933. Mayor Sely began her educational journey at St. Cyprian's Primary School in Sophia Town and went on to do her junior certificate at Madiba Amit Secondary High School. After obtaining her junior certificate, Mayor Sely Motlana moved on to obtain her teaching certificate at Grace Geo Dancing Training College in Bolivar. Upon her return to Johannesburg, she continued her, educational, her, her education and obtained her metric qualification while working as a teacher at St. Mary's Primary School in Sophia Town. Once she obtained her metric certification, she enrolled at the University of Fort Hare in 1950, where she met Ntato Harrison Motlana, with whom she shared a passion for the struggle of liberating South Africa from the yoke of apartheid. In 1953, Sely and Ntato were joined in holy matrimony and left with four children, Kamoto, Labuham, Garabo, and Ntato. Mayor Motlana was a lifelong activist, and by the time she married in 1953, Sedi Motlana had been part of the Victoria East branch of the ANC at Fort Hare. 
Pont Sally and the Tatters returned to Johannesburg. Sally taught at St. Mary's School in Sophia Town. She left her teaching post as an act of defiance of the apartheid government's Bantu Education Act of 1953. In 1955, the apartheid police raided Sophia Town and possibly relocated the residents to Midlands, Soweto. Sally and Tato moved to Western Native Township. While living in Western Native Township, the Anglican Church asked Mayor Matana to head a group of Anglican nursery schools headquartered at Jukonyane. In the battle that the system waged against its victims, Selim Motana proved to be an adept political activist and a spiritual human being with a passion for community-based development initiatives. She supported activists across the political divide. She also financially supported the activities of most political parties. She served also as a courier, taking money to the African National Congress in exile. Mayor Matana was not only an activist, she was also an entrepreneur and businesswoman. And her work spanned many years. In 1962, Mayor Matana opened Caesar stores in Mofolo, Soweto, which store became a pillar to the community of Soweto. It became a refuge of protection during the 1976 riots when students from Rose Morris Isaacson High School and the surrounding Soweto found refuge and protection when fleeing the apartheid police. Her entrepreneurial spirit, spirit went hand in hand with her powerful social justice activism. She was active in the Black House Web Z and she was active in the Black House Web Z and in the 1970s was elected to serve as its national president. The Black House Wives League is a women-led organization that aims to empower women. She traveled across the world, accessing empowerment and training programs for members of the League. She served for 20 years as its president and was later awarded the title of Lifelong Honorary President. Selim Motana served as a board member and patron to numerous companies and non-governmental organizations, including South African Rail Commuter Corporation, South African Post Office, South African Red Meat, World Vision, York Timber, South African Institute of Race Relations, among others. She was an active member of the National African Federated Chamber of Commerce and Industry, NAFCO. As a political activist, Selim Watana was detained and imprisoned numerous times. In 1976, she was detained at number four women's prison. She was detained again in 1977 and 1978 at GP police station. Detention did not deter her from her activism. This is evidenced by her daring act of carefully identifying police that she could recruit to the struggle, as a result of which she arranged the springing of young detainees from prison. These young men made it safely to exile, together with the police she recruited. She also led a strike at the women's prison. During this time, Selim Motana still found time to serve on the board of Operation Hunger and 
in Johannesburg, Dyson, Kanto. Salim Motana served as an Anglican representative and later Vice President of the South African Council of Churches, SACC, at the most difficult time faced by the church, she became an energizing force in taking a stand against the unjust apartheid system. She traveled extensively on behalf of the SACC and all African Council of Churches raising awareness in the international community about the oppression and dehumanizing effects of the apartheid region. She remains the SACC's honorary lifetime president. In recognition of her service, Salim Otana was awarded the Order of the Boba in silver in 2007 by the President of South Africa for her contribution, her contribution to women's emancipation and upliftment and her struggle for a non-racial just and democratic South Africa. Salim Motlana was admitted to the order of Simon of Cyrene for her service to the Anglican Church and the role she has played in social justice. Salim Motlana was called home on the 24th of June 2023. She leaves behind her four children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and many nieces and nephews. Kurbala Kapkhoto Mukoni. Are maunyetla la shakwan. Wena mwapolo. Wagaba khomu ya rangwato. Mukodiyo ato angwa shakwe, bari komuli moto raba pala. Kupala moto basa jiru komu ririr late. Mwato mugolo mbafula mugoni mugoni raba laka pot. Seated.
land. Praise the Lord. Praise the new servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's name now and forever. Amen. Me kneel. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and wickedly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and in deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may save you in years of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God our Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, died and rose again for our salvation. We entrust to you the soul of your servant, Sally, praying that she and all the faithful departed may be revealed as your children when Christ shall come again to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us kiss her. Uh. 
reading from the book of Job, chapter 42, beginning at the first verse to the sixth verse. Apologies. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Hear the word of the Lord. Our psalm is found on page 777, Psalm 126. Psalm 126, for those who have our prayer books, it's found on page 777. I will lead the psalm alone. When the Lord turned against the fortunes of Zion, then they were like men restored to life. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and the tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Truly, the Lord has done great things for us, and therefore we rejoice. Turn again our fortunes, O Lord, as the streams return to the dry south. Those that saw in tears shall reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed, shall come again in gladness, bringing his sheaves with him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, beginning from the 35th verse to chapter 11, verse 1. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hear the word of the Lord. Well.
Mamilan manza mule mo, uswa ipan kedin ya Johanne, muha la haledi. Kaolo ya masome amabedi, rikale ubala timanen, ya masome amabedi lebone. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, we read from verse 24. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Through the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then they said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Then Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Christ.
that God as we come before your presence, we thank you for being our God as we trust in you. We pray that as we share your words, we know that your words will comfort the family. And I speak these words in the name of God, our Creator, the Son, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the Life Giver. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Take this opportunity to thank Bishop Steve, the Bishop of the Diocese of Johannesburg, for being gracious and allowing me to preach at this service, and also to Archbishop Chavo, who, as the Archbishop and the Father of Simon of Cyrene, which is the highest uh, award in the Anglican Church, is his service together with Bishop Steve. The bishops that are here, former President, His Excellency President Kabul Beki and Mama Zanele, and the former Deputy Chief Justice Ntade Mosele. clergy that are here and all the mourners. <coughs> to Motana family and Maumia. <coughs> we come together this morning to remember and to give thanks to God. for the life well lived of Mama Sili. To commend her to the loving mercy of God. To the Motlana and Maunye family. As you grieve the passing of Mama, know that God's love continues through you in your loss and in your pain. As you mourn, as all of us mourn, have passing and especially as a family. <laughs> Know that grief is a price we pay for love. You know her love, for you cannot, it cannot be paramount, and you loved her just as well. You cared for her until her last day. <clears throat> so as it is difficult moment for you, grieving is a process, <clears throat> but not just a process, it is a painful process of letting go. It is not easy, but in this process, you need to let go. You have known Mama since you opened your eyes. And for such a martyr, there is no way that it can't be a painful process to let her go. 
I need not to remind you as Christians that Christ has triumphed over death and that there, therefore we need no longer fear death. Yesterday, at a service with the Archbishop, we read Psalm 46. The Lord is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, I shall not fear, though the earth be moved. Sure, you know that at the passing of Mama, it was like the earth has moved. But God is still God. Today, we celebrate at Mama's funeral the feast of St. Thomas. And all the readings, if you followed, are so appropriate for this child. Thomas, as we heard, was a missing disciple when Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. He is known as Doubting Thomas and was a man of certain very definitive characteristics. He was a man of courage. He appears in the story of Lazarus in John chapter 11 when news had come to Jesus that Lazarus was ill, and for two days Jesus made no move. The Jewish authorities in Jerusalem were determined that Jesus should die. And on two occasions, he had been in danger of being stoned. To death. Now, to go to Jerusalem seemed a suicidal act of recklessness. When Jesus intimated his intention to go to Jerusalem, the disciples came closely, very close, to abandoning him. And then there came the voice of the normally silent Thomas. Let us also go that we may die with him. Ahead, Thomas could see nothing but disaster. But nevertheless, he was going on. Thomas was grimly determined to be faithful unto death. For Thomas, there might be death, but there could never be disloyalty to Jesus. Thomas's faith was firm and true to the point that he was ready to lay down his life for the sake of the Lord and standing true to his allegiance. St. Thomas himself would go on to die in matter, defending his faith against those who opposed his good works and good news. Thomas becomes the Thomas, the model believer, an example for each one of us. He is the great beacon of light for all of us as we are called to cry out with him, my Lord and my God. Mama said, just 
was like Thomas, was courageous, was determined, was loyal, stood firm to fight the injustices of the day. She fought for a free South Africa. She fought for justice. She laid down her life for the freedom of women and children and everyone, even those who were persecuting her. She believed in the words of St. Paul's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. I'm using these words as if Mama Sedi was speaking them. I can be hard pressed on every side, but I will never be crushed. I may be perplexed, but not in despair. I can be persecuted, but God will never abandon me. I can be struck down, but they will never destroy me. Therefore, I will not lose heart for the freedom of the people of South Africa. In the words of the Old Testament, the reading from Job chapter 42, Job said, I know that you can do all things, and that no peoples of yours can be thwarted. The intro team that was said by the immunological to she believed the torture, the insults of the oppressor will not prevent her from succeeding in what God had proposed for her. She believed that jailing, being jailed, would not thwart God's purpose for a better South Africa. She believed, she had faith that God can do anything and that God must be trusted without any question to remain in charge of everything. Psalm 126 says everything about Mama Se. It reminds us that indeed God's purpose can never be thwarted. 1994 was like a dream. As the psalmist says, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion. And 1984, the 27, God restored the fortunes, the prayers, the, the determination, the courage of people of Mama Selly's caliber. It was like a dream when we went to vote as black and white together. And we will remember after the Archbishop had cast his vote, he said, we are the people of God. We are the rainbow people of God. We are free, all of us. And this is the fight that Mama Sebi fought. It was like a dream because God saw, God heard, God came down. Because of the courageous and determination of the lives of people who were with Mama Sey all the time. People who fought with their boots on, who prayed and knowing that nothing will thwart the peoples of God. God restored us back. 
to be fully human as we were treated like subhuman. It was because of the bravery of Mama Sally and us. And that was able to reveal himself and restore our fortunes. I like Eugene Peterson's version of message of this song. He says, it seemed like a dream too good to be true. We laughed, we sang, we couldn't believe our future. We realized that, yes, we can make it. We were the talk of the world, of the nations. God was wonderful to all of us. We were the happy people. This reflects our time of joy. It was, we were, it was like returning from exile in our own country. We were filled with wonder. So, Mama Sally had faith, and the writer to the Hebrews explains faith. Mama Sally was not a creature. She stayed with the faith. She survived and trusting all the way that one day we will be free. What a sad time. It seems as if as South Africa we have gone back. We have people who are supposed to be in leadership, who are self-serving, who do not want to take responsibility for their own actions. We have people who protect corruption. Now the disciples were behind closed doors, but Mama Sally was not behind the closed door. She was always out there. We need as South Africans to come out of our closed doors and say we are not going back to exile. We need to stand up. We need to restore our fortunes. The poor of our country are becoming poorer. The rich are become richer. The young people are without jobs. We can't stay behind closed doors. We can't leave the resilience of Mama Sally to die when we are dead. We cannot allow that the water should go and dry again. Mama Sally stood as a model, as a messenger, as a witness, and a light post for all of us as an educator. Mama Sally in a Iliputati child. Or Iliputi. When I on our Zeba as I would say, you were a child. And I want us today, in honor of Mama Se, we need to make a declaration as South Africans at this funeral. Like in 1994, say we declare that God will restore our fortunes again. 
We can't go on weeping every day. We want that joy to come back. To the Montana and Maunia family, as Jesus revealed himself to Thomas and the disciples, that he was resurrected, he is revealing himself afresh to you. And he says, peace be with you. Mama is at peace with Jesus, who is a resurrection and a life, who defeated death. Jesus appeared through locked doors to fearful disciples and stood among them. He comes especially for you and stands with you especially at this time as you grieve and granting you peace that passes all understanding. God, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the eyes of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations. Thank you, Mama, for revealing Christ that you can be a Christian and ignore oppression injustice, corruption. You taught us we need to stand up. As for you, Mama, your life was poured out as an libation. And the time of your departure has come. You have fought the good fight. You have finished the race. You kept the faith. You restored our fortunes. We declare to you that we will never allow the country you fought for to go back to exile because of corruption. Go in peace. The Bakanishi. Halifita Kopi, the Babucho Kore, the sons and the current. But it's a different fight. But we will fight nonetheless.
us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we celebrate this Holy Eucharist with praise and thanksgiving for the hope of everlasting life which is ours in Christ Jesus. Keep us steadfast in this faith during the time, this time of sorrow and bereavement. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We give you thanks for your love reflected in Sally's life and for the joys that we have shared with her. Free us from all bitterness and regret. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We thank you that our Lord Jesus came to share our sufferings and enter into our sorrows. May all who mourn know his compassion and be filled with his peace. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for those who tend the sick and the dying, especially for those who cared for Sally. May your gentleness and love be always revealed through them. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for our unity in Christ, which even death cannot destroy. Increase our faith in the communion of saints. Lord, in your mercy.
holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts, make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave me thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christo Shuile, Christo Tuhile, Christo Tlaboelai. Jale Mudimunta de Reone la Mohobe, Babu Pilo, Moho, Lesenelo, Sapuluho, Renzelho, Botelli Fu, Letsuho, Yahaji so Christ. We are Yubo Hopani, Oren Seba, Tanurang, Hema Pila Hau, the whole Sibelit. Re o rapela ka bo ikoko betso gore ka go abelana melin ma dia Christ re tere go pa ngwe bongwe ka mo o hanalelang o go mure selebane kere ke a hao ka bo phara ba le fatsi o re hodise le ratong ha moho le thabo mo bisopo mogolo wa rona Leba, 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 bishop of Oshaba province, leba, disabo, shebayona. Opola, lebana, barona, ba, tobaletsing, ba, naletsepo, yamtuha. Moholebo, sheba, faletsing, bafumale, mohau, uyena, uyena. Oba, amohela, hanging, lesefa, shehum, saha. Lord Labo, she put a how hele, rea who opa, Rikaran Swanele, Oba, Lekabela, and Pilombo, Safilin, Copano, Lemaria, Filihoya, Hala de Lang, Mamudimo, Leba Apostola, Ba Hala de Lang, Leba Hala Lady, Babimo, Hayo, she, Bailing, Bau Hatis, Agabo, Pilobabona, Elohore, Ham Mohonebona, Rete, Rohoro Rise, Rehutu Kise, Gahur Ham Mohonebona, Rete Rehutu Kise, Gatiso Creste Morena, Waha. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. <laughs>
Fore Borgo Mata, Hassovela and Milwa Crestena. We will sing the Agnes Day after the communion prayer. Together, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and 